So Digimon's voice has been out for a couple of days now and I've been really enjoying it. So things I want to talk about in this video is my first impressions, obviously leaving out all spoilers. And another thing is I want to talk about how it was received. Uh, so starting off with my first impressions, I've been playing the game quite a little bit and it's actually kind of fun. I like it. Like visual novels and strategy RPGs are not particularly the kind of games that I gravitate towards, but this one is a lot of fun. I just really like the characters, the story, the setting. There's a lot about it. Uh, the battles, while they're kind of bare bones for a strategy RPG, I kind of enjoy them. They're still kind of fun. I suppose probably because seeing all the different Digimon or whatever, just battling, uh, recruiting Digimon through battles, there's a few different things that I just really enjoy about that. So it made it very easy for me to like the game. The other thing I would like to say about characters and story without spoiling it is uh, I want to talk about how it kind of, it's it pays homage to Digimon Adventure. We know Habu spoke to the director of Digimon Adventure and they shared some ideas for the game. Uh, but it's definitely, it shows, it really, really shows. Uh, through characters that are in the game, you can see some resemblance to other characters from Adventure. You can see some resemblance from stuff that's in the story. Uh, but one thing I will say is that it definitely takes a darker tone, which I really like. You could tell the game was targeted towards people that grew up with Adventure and loved Adventure all them years ago. As well as new fans that are coming in through Shimigami Tensei or Persona. I really love that. Uh, the fact that they're actually letting the games grow along with the fan base. So obviously it's a visual novel. There's going to be a lot of text. Uh, the battles do take a back seat in this game. It's not a traditional uh, monster raising game where it's a lot of battles are taking place. This one, the battles really take a back seat, and it's more so just all about the adventure and just talking to characters and building relationship with characters and just figuring out the story, which I like. It's it's nice. It's like sitting back and reading a manga or sitting back reading a book of some kind. Maybe one thing I'd have to say about it that if I had to nitpick is I really wish they added an English dub just because I would have liked to have had uh, the character speak in English rather than having to constantly read. I don't know, sometimes I get a little bit lazy. So that's why I'm saying this is kind of a nitpick for myself, really. Uh, I also know a couple of people did want to see a dub in there, which is a real shame that it didn't happen. So the game has multiple different endings based on your decisions you make in game. But other things that your decisions in game actually affect is your affinity with other characters, like your relationship. Uh, it also affects your monster's evolution, which is really cool. Unfortunately, on release, the game actually got in the hands of people before it was supposed to be released. This just happens. There's nothing you can really do. This just happens with everything. Uh, spoiler started to go around the internet. So I got to the point that Habu and Bandai stepped in and they says, look, uh, we prefer you didn't post anything past chapter 5 for spoilers, uh, but if you were to, uh, just tag it as a spoiler, which is fair, which is fair. There's been a hashtag for Digimon Survive spoilers and all going around Twitter. People have been using that to share uh, their experience with the game or whatever. So it's fine. I, I don't mind that. Uh, that. That wasn't too bad. Uh, the other thing is it did split the fan base and there was people in here like so this game it's already split the fan base we knew about this uh people weren't happy when they seen it wasn't story they weren't happy when they seen it wasn't world bandai in the last like few years maybe 10 years or so they've been very comfortable in the style of games they bring out they're always a Digimon story or a Digimon world game. Uh, whereas back in the days, it used to be, we got strategy games, we got dungeon crawlers, we got RPGs, we got VPEC games. So there was a whole load of different style of Digimon games we'd get back to back to back. Every game was different. Uh, but now that they kind of like, they have their comfort zone and they're using this game to kind of step out of their comfort zone. I think people just really weren't expecting that and they're just not happy with it. I for one, I'm happy. I'm happy. I, I like to see Bandai kind of experiment with Digimon. I think it's a lot of fun to try out new new styles of games or whatever. I've been introduced to a lot of styles of games through playing different Digimon games. So I'm, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, but I don't know. It's not for everyone, which is understandable. Uh, what's not understandable, what's not fair, is that people are literally just review bombing the game. Like people are taking it to Metacritic and just review bombing the game just because it's a visual novel. Uh, people saying that, oh, there's no battles in this, or oh, there's very little battles in this, what's going on? It's like, this is supposed to be a tactical RPG, we bought a strategy RPG, and this is a visual novel. It's always been marketed as 70-30 split, with 70% of the game being a visual novel. Uh, if you weren't paying attention to that, I don't know what to say. I mean, you clearly didn't, like, follow anything. Uh, not to call anyone out or anything, but that's, that's, just, it. that's just the way it is, like... Um, I mean, since day one, I'm pretty sure they said it was a visual novel style of game. 
But I don't know. I think it was ma it set out pretty clear what it was. Um, I just wish that people were a little bit more mature about it and just says, okay, look, we, we don't like the style of game. It's not for us and just leave it at that. If you wanted to leave a review, leave a review of like your experience with the game. But I don't think you should uh, leave, leave bad reviews because of the genre or because you didn't look into it properly. The only thing I want to say about that is that it's not good. <laughs> it's not good for the people that want to see a sequel this. Uh, people like the developers uh bandai the whole lot they're gonna be looking at these reviews they see that is negatively reviewed people didn't like it they say okay we're just not gonna bring out another one of these digimon survive is probably if not one of the most it is the most successful digimon game to be released uh it's been trending all over twitter since days before its release uh even still i see it's still trending on twitter as a point in recording this it's it's just there it's like everyone everyone wants to play play this game or try it out uh people are surprised to see digimon came back this game got big enough that it made people get back into digimon that forgot about it the hype that was built up around this game there was so much put into this game and for people to come out and review bomb it and possibly like damage the chances of the sequel which they already have ideas for uh, that's that's just disappointing, really. Uh, it's like I would like to see a sequel to this game. I want to see them kind of like see where they can go with this idea. There's a lot they can do, um, but if if people are just gonna be like this about it, it's just not gonna happen. So yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts on everything. Um, but yeah, I've been playing the game on Twitch. If you want to follow me over there, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to follow me and just check out my my uh, playthrough and just talk to me over there. That'd be awesome. See you. Bye bye.